Hello everyone. In this video I'll be talking with you about a couple of math problems that I have and I'll be presenting that on some PowerPoint slides. So let's go ahead and take a look at those math problems that we have. Okay, and we are on our fundamental math problems set number one. We're going to have three uh, math problems total in this set number one. So, problem number one. If a prime number x is squared and the result is added to the next prime number that is greater than x, which of the following integers could be the sum? And these are your answer choices. Uh, these numbers which consist of a range from 2 to 69. So, again, if a prime number is squared and the result is added to the next prime number that is greater than x, which of the following integers could be the sum? So I would first uh, go about solving this problem by setting up an equation for the relationship. And that equation, based upon the description in the problem, is that you're going to square a number, a prime number that is, and then the next consecutive uh, prime number, n sub 2, you're going to add to that. And so I would go ahead and start listing several prime numbers to cover the span of listed answers. So let's go ahead and do that and then we'll come up with 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, and 23. Now we're going to go ahead and do some uh, some squaring here and then some addition following the form of the equation that we have just devised here. So for starters, we have 2 squared plus 3, okay, because we have 2 is our first prime number, 3 is our next prime number. So 2 squared plus 3 equals 4 plus uh, 3, which equals 7. Next, we have 3 squared plus 5, continuing that same pattern, because you, 3 is the next one and then 5 is after that. So 3 squared plus 5 equals 9, plus 5, which equals 14. 5 squared plus 7 equals 25, plus 7, which equals 32. 7 squared plus 11 equals 49, plus 11, which equals 60. 11 squared plus 13 equals 121, plus 13, which equals 134. Now, the choices uh, that we have to pick from for answers, again, they range from 2 to 69, so at 134, we can definitely stop there. And so, let's go ahead through this and compare and contrast. Well, do we have a 2 in our results? No. 4? No. We have a 7, so that's one of them. Do we have 14? Yes. That's another one. Do we have a 58? No. Do we have a 60? Yes. 65? No. 69? No. So the answers are C, D, and F. So next, problem number two. A store will only order phones that come in complete cases. Each case has 75 phones and cost $17.57. So, $1,757. The question is, which is greater? The number of phones that can be ordered uh, with $10,550 or B, the number of phones that can be ordered with $12,290 or C, the quantities are equal or D, the relationship cannot be determined based on the given information. So, um, first thing to, to notice in this problem, and this is how I would go about solving it, is that it's a, it's a problem that has some extraneous information, and it's a good example of a problem with extraneous information. And question being, uh, well, what is the extraneous information? Well, we are looking for how many cases we can get for 10, 5, 50, and uh, 12,290 
and then comparing the two. So the 75 phones is extraneous information to answering the question. And so we're going to disregard the, uh, the 75 phones and any of the calculations that we uh, do on this problem. So next, uh, how many cases can we get for $10,550? Well, we take that $10,550 and multiply it by one case per $1,757, and we have an answer of 6.0046 cases. Now, they have to be whole cases, so we're going to round down because basically it's just overflow. And of course, the store would get uh, reimbursed for their residual, their remainder, little pocket change, whatever it is. So we're going to round down and we're going to say that you can get six cases for that dollar amount of, of a purchase. So again, we are looking for whole amounts, so the answer is six cases. Next, how many cases for $12,290? Well, $12,290 times one case per $1,757 equals 6.9949 cases. So again, we're looking for whole numbers, so the answer is for that, that the whole amount for this dollar amount is still six cases. So what does that mean? We have six cases here and six cases there. So the answer is C because the number of whole cases is equal. Okay, and so now on to our final problem in this problem set. Problem number three. If the product of two distinct integers is 91, then which of the values uh, could possibly be the sum of the two integers? And the values that we have to choose from are not, uh, negative 92, negative 98, negative 7, 12, and 20. So the product of two distinct integers being 91. So how would you approach this problem? Well, the way I approached it was to factor 91 into its components. So by factoring 91 into its components, you can see all of what it's composed of and what you could actually uh, multiply to make 91. So that would be 7 and 13, which are prime numbers, so we don't have to even go any further. But also, take note of the fact that 91 is also equal to 1 times 91. So those are factors of 91 as well and we're going to include those as well. Now, we're going to ev next evaluate all of the possibilities including negative integers according to the problem description because the problem description didn't give any restrictions on whether or not numbers were only positive or only negative. So we're going to include negative integers in our evaluation. So first, 7 times 13 is 91. That meets the criteria for the product. Negative 7 times negative 13 is also 91. That meets the criteria. 1 times 91 is 91. That meets the criteria. And negative 1 times negative 91 is equal to 91. That also meets the criteria. So now what we're going to do is sum those numbers up together that we had paired up as, as, uh, as being multiplied by each other. And uh, so we're going to evaluate those possibilities with addition. So 7 plus 13 is equal to 20. Negative 7 plus negative 13 is equal to negative 20. 1 plus 91 is equal to 92 and negative 1 plus negative 91 is equal to negative 92. So those are answers that we have and uh, that covers all of the possibilities. So let's go ahead and look through our answer list and start choosing answers. The answer choices were negative 92, negative 98, negative 7, 12, and 20. So, negative 92 is in our list here. 
negative 98, no, that's not there. Negative 7, no, that's not there. 12, no, that's not there. 20, yes, that is right there. So the answers are then A and E, respectively, as compared with, uh, as correlated with negative 92 and 20. So A and E are the answers to this problem. And so that brings us to the end of our fundamental math problems in set number one. And as always, practice to scale up your fluency in the subject area. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful for you and have a nice day.